you think we can transform this $50 Facebook Marketplace find into something like this from Pottery Barn? Here it is, first time in this room. We wanted to see how it looked with the design on the walls, so we had a better idea of how much we need to shorten it. So after looking at our inspiration pieces, they were about five to six inches off the ground. So we're gonna try to salvage the footboard. So we're gonna measure from the bottom of this center piece, about five inches down, and we can cut that off of the height of the footboard and the headboard. To keep the basic straight lines of this design, we're gonna use the top of this footboard and we're gonna straighten off all of that and then just cut off the rest. So all the rest of that is gonna just be scrap wood. You'll start to see it take shape in just a minute. To make our cut nice and square, we're going to use the framing square to align it with the top of the board and then just place a piece of tape where we would like to cut. On the reverse side, we have, um, what are those called? I don't even know. The brackets to hold yeah, the brackets. side rails. And so you'll notice that where we are gonna cut is right in the middle of the bracket. So we're gonna remove those and then to put the bed all back together, we're gonna have to route out a new hole or at least a longer hole and move the brackets down. But for now, we're just gonna remove the brackets so we can get the headboard cut to where we need it to be. To make this a little bit easier to work with, we don't need all this wood anymore. So we're just gonna lob it off about right here. So we're just working with these lower parts. Okay, we're going to actually just measure up from the bottom of the leg so that we get an accurate measurement all the way around. And we're actually gonna go up six inches off the bottom of each leg. Okay, so now we're gonna take off that same six inches off of the legs on the headboard. So we're just gonna mark each of them again, take them to the saw. Here's our, not, yeah, our footboard words. So far, <laughs> we're gonna, this is so distressed. It kind of like takes a dip in and goes back out. So we're gonna use a chalk line to give us a better idea of how straight it is. If you guys have a better idea, <laughs> maybe what we're doing, drop it in the comments. Sometimes we just figure things out as we go. Okay, I think that's all right. Good. So, so let's I'll hold it, you snap it. Okay, so the chalk line did give us a good idea of where we're gonna cut this off. What we ultimately did was just measured down. This was the bottom of the footboard. Measured down, we're gonna do 11 and what? Seven eighths. Seven eighths. So we're just gonna mark that on both legs just to know that everything's the same height and we'll cut these pieces off. Well, that looks pretty fierce. Look at how they're just fast. Yes. Guys, we're loving this storm look blowing at, look in. Look at it over there at the left. It's blowing in fast. And it's nice and delightful out here while we work. Yeah, it's moving right over that sunshiny valley over there. We're gonna get hammered. Are you guys like us and check your blade 50 times before you start? It's a little <laughs> nerve wracking sometimes. Here we go. Ta -da! Shazam! Awesome. I was so glad the chop saw did this and we didn't have to rip out the table saw. Boom. Ooh, here it comes. Yep. Here comes the not sun rain. Guys, we get excited for rain here because it never rains here.
And wow, you guys, it is it, way more rustic than I thought we knew. I was shocked <laughs> when I saw it because there's gouges and whatever, and maybe it was the lighting. I'm not sure, but it was way more rustic than we ever thought. So can you even fathom that we're going to take this and try to transform it into something modern like this? Let us know if you think we're crazy and stick around because we always make it work somehow. So <laughs> stick with us through the process. You're going to see some cool things happen, I think. And it's going to be a lot more modern and fit this space perfectly. We decided that this is the back side of the bed. Yes, sorry, we won't show you too much detail, but this really was a custom made piece and I feel bad altering it like this, but this is like the third owner it's been to. So whoever it was made for enjoyed it and gave it away firstly, so it's okay. We're saving it from the landfill. But we did decide to use the back of the headboard just because it's a lot more smooth and clean lines where the front was just so warps not even the right word it was just so textured that it just was not even flat so we're going to measure from the bottom of the headboard 43 inches can't focus and then we're just gonna cut all the way through to square it off so we're gonna run a piece of frog tape across so that our chalk line will adhere a little bit better and how far up are you going um i'm just right to the top of the okay yeah okay you got it tight yes okay here's a look at the chalk line mark so we'll have a better idea where to cut this and we're going to take it to the table saw for that and back to that see 2002 so this bed has had a long life already and we're just going to make it another 20 years with our little remodel instead of taking the headboard to the table saw we decided to try our new rip cut tool from craig um it only goes up to 24 inches and what and what I mean by that is this guide here you can hook your circular saw on here and move your saw anywhere between 0 and 24 inches and that was just a little too small for what we needed if we were to use the edge of the bed so what we're doing is placing a straight edge that we have against I mean there's like a little dip right there so we're putting the straight edge there so that we can then put the guide right up to that and then we'll run it right on our chalk line. So that's our plan and we'll see how this goes. Our blade wasn't quite deep enough to go through all of this. We're taking this to the uh, chop saw. Cut that off on both sides. Okay, here we go. So we brought the bed in just to kind of get a good idea of the progress we've made so far, give you an idea of how it's gonna look in this room. You can see it's just a lot more simple, clean lines, and it goes a lot better with this modern look that we're going for. Now, I'll do a little close up to show you these side rails. Just like the rest of the bed, they are super textured and rustic, which at some point in my life, I did like that style, but we've moved on. The rail itself is even different thicknesses throughout the whole length of it because it's so grooved and routed and I don't like these curves. So we're just gonna straighten up the lines like we did on the footboard and headboard. However, these boards are so, I don't even know, angled, if maybe that's the right word. I've been rounded off, I think is. Yes, that we are just going to save ourselves the time from having to build these back up to a square look that we're gonna actually buy new wood for these rails and then we're gonna take the hardware off and 
so that we can use it to build the bed properly. Then when we have the side rails finished, obviously they will be about the same height as the footboard here. And we're going to add some trim work around the entire edge to make it look like a platform bed. And it will give it a lot more finished look. So we're gonna head to the store now, get our supplies, come with us, and we'll get the build of this bed finished. Okay, we're just gonna take a quick measure here of the side to know how big of a board we need to purchase to make our new rails. Do you want to start on your face? For the sideboards, we're going to use a select pine because it doesn't have any knot holes and we're going to use a one by six by eight board. We're going to grab two of those and Steph is going to take those out and look down the length of them to look and make sure that they are straight and not warped. You don't want to get home and find out that your board is warped. Nothing is worse. And then we're going to also pick up a one by four by eight that we're going to use to top off the side rail and we're just going to rip that in half. We're going to also pick up a couple of um, one by four by six foot boards that we will use to finish off the top of the headboard and the footboard. We just got back from the hardware store and we're gonna cut our new side rails down to length, which is 73 and three quarters. Gonna use our straight edge here for a nice square line. Next up, we're going to measure that one by four that we're going to use as a cap for the side rails and then cut that with the chop saw. <laughs> now we're gonna take our three and a half inch uh, select pine board and rip it in half. And these are going to be used to kind of cap off the top edge of the side rails to create that platform look. So we're going to remove this hardware on the side rails so that we can reuse them for our new ones. We're just going to unscrew it. And use a screwdriver to pop it out. Maybe. Worked the other time. There we go. And for the new side rails, we're going to have to route out this so we can put this back in. Wish us luck. We're gonna remove them off of the headboard as well because we're gonna need to slide them down. And if you remember, we rotated the headboard around, so we have to do it on the other side anyway. All right, we are on yet another day. This project's taken a bit, but let's show you what we're doing with these bed rails. We're working on routing out the side rails for the hardware that needs to go in there. So we've practiced on some of our scrap wood. Huge thanks to my dad for setting up the router just how we needed it. I'll show you how it's gonna work. So basically, the bit is right in there and it's set up to the right height that we need and we've got these stops set up on both sides so that we can just slip this down in there and go back and forth and that essentially gave us the perfect little space flipping on We're gonna put these in our grooves now so we know where to drill our pilot holes. Our groove is 
a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to center it as best I can. We also want all the hardware to be going the same way so that the bed rails will actually work. So I'm drawing a little arrow there to make sure I do the same on every side. Okay, so I'm just going to tap these ends and it's going to mark can see them really good. Okay. Yep. Right there. Yeah, a little harder. That there. was good. And we're going to just do a little bit of drilling so that that sits down there evenly. We're going to drill our pilot holes now just so we don't split the wood when we're screwing in the hardware. And then where the hardware was grooved, I'm just going to drill in a little bit there as well to kind of notch out the space. We're trying out the chisel, or er, chisel. <laughs> if you don't have a chisel, you can try a screwdriver. That's just gonna help me get some straight lines, I think, and we can get it wide enough to fit that hardware in there. There probably is some real cool tool for this. Probably we could just set the uh, router in router. there. <laughs> we, we could, with a small bit. It's okay. I'm not sure we have one that small though. This is fine. It's kind of feel naughty doing this, like you're ruining something. <laughs> like some little boy that will remain unnamed carving his name into the windowsill. That's right. 10 points if you can guess who it is in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right, let's see if that worked now. That looks good to me. Yeah, I think once we drill that in, those will be sucked in there just fine. Just right. Now that the side rails are done, we need to adjust the placement for the hardware on the footboard. So we've drawn how deep it needs to go and we've practiced on the legs that we've cut down used this as our demo piece so we know what we're doing. Set up this jig. So I'm going to use our router lining this flat edge up against this piece of wood and I'll just take it all the way down till this hits this line and it will get me routed clear up to there. So here we go. This piece right here is the leg of the headboard and to figure out where we need to put our routed edge for this piece, I measured up from the bottom of the leg the same distance that our bracket was on the footboard and placed a mark and then I've marked it down an inch and a half on either side and that will give us the edge where to stop the router on either side. So this is the edge we need to router out for the little hook part on the rail, the bed rail. If we had a router bit small enough, we could just use this as our guide and route right in there, but we don't. So that's why we set up our little lines to help us. So here we go. Whoops, I need a battery. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one thing about these tools that I love because you can just pop batteries from one to another. And it's nice to have a bunch so you don't run out and have to stop your project. You can see this is not perfect, you know, but it's gonna be fine. First of all, that's gonna hide it. We did make sure that it's deep enough, so that's great. Now I'm going to 
I'm actually going to slide it up a smidge because I can. We need to keep it level. with this line right there so that everything hangs at the same height. But I'm just gonna leave this in place now and drill my pilot holes and then we can screw it into place. And we'll just repeat that on the other side. The router option did work great, but if you don't have one, I mean, you're going to have to have one for this, but we did a drill with this side and it worked a lot better because the router bit we had only could, it was so, the bit itself was only so deep. So we had to do like one layer, then lower the bit, then do another layer, lower the bit and on and on. So this way is a little bit quicker, I feel. So you can try this at home too. Before we insert this bracket into our new space, you can see that we oh, have, holes. yeah, the holes from where this used to be. So what we're going to do is put a stir stick in here and cut it to the right height, glue them in to fill those holes up. Then we can put that right and then we there. we still need to router these parts. Right. So, okay. Just gonna load these holes up with some glue and we're going really heavy on it. Probably too heavy, that's okay. It's better to have too much. And then I'm just gonna use this to tap that down into place. See that all squishing out? That's good. Was that the piece I yeah, needed? Yep. That is the piece you need. Whoops. It's okay. It is okay. And then after this dries, we're just going to chop that end off. Let's move that glue all around. And let that set up. We're coming to the home stretch now. We are going to use these support boards that are on the existing side rails so that we can rest our boards on that the mattress will lay on. So we're just gonna use a five in one tool and a hammer to pry that free. We've already done the other side and, and you can see that these are nailed on too. So we're gonna use our oscillating tool to cut these off too, cause we don't need these square portions. First, we're going to apply some wood glue along that support rail and then place it on our placement line and then just secure it with the existing um, holes that were there with some wood screws. And then finally, we're just gonna wipe off any excess glue that squeezes out. Okay, we have got to drill a couple of pilot holes because we had to trim these down a little bit shorter than the original side rails were. So we're going to first do a little pilot hole so we don't split the wood. And we put some masking tape on there so that we don't drill too deep and go into the wood below. Now we've switched the bit to a countersink and so we're just going to do that so that the screw will sink into the wood. Our boards are secure and this is what will hold the support boards for the mattress so that we yeah our slats that's what they're called <laughs> the slats so that we're doing this without a box underneath it will just be the mattress sitting on slats so we want to add a 
border or a cap to the top of the footboard. And we have our three and a half inch pine board that we're gonna do for that. So what we're gonna do to mark it is turn the footboard upside down. And we're going to find the flush edges on both the side and the front. And then bring it over to this side, make sure it's flush and I'll be able to mark the wood. And then we'll know right where to cut it. Now that we've got the length cut, we're just gonna mark how far back it comes on both sides so that we can rip it down to the right width. We just took the measurements for the top of the headboard and we're gonna mark that to 58 and little past seven eighths. Now we're going to rip down that little piece of wood on both the cap pieces for the foot and headboards. Ooh, this is a milestone, you guys. Look how good it's coming along. So just to finish it off, we're gonna put some cap boards on the footboard, side rails, and the headboard. And we're gonna tack these in with some brad nails, put some wood glue on it. And we repeat the same process with the headboard. Okay, we've made a pencil line so we know where to shoot our brad nails so that we don't go outside of our three quarter inch board. I'm gonna do both ends first. Steph can run them down the center. And if you're still watching, thank you so much. You are a true DIYer at heart. We are almost finished with this build and appreciate you sticking around till the end. We're going to wash the wood with a little bit of dish soap to get rid of any grease or grime that's on there first. Doing this also will prevent uh, like gumming up your sander because you just never know what's on these pieces. We're using the orbital sander to even out some of the distressing that is on this wood so that it will have more of a modern look. We're using an 80 grit sandpaper to take it down and then we'll follow it with a medium and then a fine. You can still see that some of the staining is on there. We're not worried about that because we're gonna do a paint finish on this, but in these more detailed areas, we need to put some wood filler or Bondo uh, to smooth it out before we do our painting technique. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We like using this putty because it's like the uh, pink plastic dap putty. It changes color when it's dry so you know right when it's ready to work with. It's easy to use. We've used this wood filler on most of the bed where there were just small little holes to fill in. We're gonna be using this Bondo for the bottom edge of the footboard because the edges are straight at the ends and then it gets a little curvy and dips in. So we're gonna use the Bondo to build that edge up better. It's like a two-part epoxy works really well. So we're gonna use this scrap piece of wood and um, clamp it together. And then we'll be able to just fill in all that area to get a nice clean edge. So if you've never used this before, it's super smelly. I'm glad we're outside. You'll wanna definitely have a well ventilated area. It recommends getting about a three inch circle of this stuff out about an in, half an inch thick 
You want to work with small enough pieces or an amount that you're mixing that's manageable to use because it dries super fast. Hardens, I should say. Like 15 minutes, it's hard. Well, but the working time is mm. about two to three minutes because it is so fast. So you really need to mix up what you can use in that amount of time. And this is the hardener cream. Do a strip on there. And then basically you're just gonna mix it all together, pressing it in and you mix for two minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for two minutes. Not yet. Okay, now. Hi. Look, there's there's my timer that's done. I decided to start applying it. I can't even turn that off. Because it felt like it was getting there. And look, it hardened already. It's super hot outside. So, less time. Lesson learned. When it's hot outside, then you have less time even. So, we're going to try this again. All right, round two. I didn't mix nearly as much on this one just because it's so hot out here. I basically just mixed so you couldn't see the white hardener in there. I'm trying to push it in here as I go. But also trying to be pretty quick. And this sands down really smoothly, so I probably should be even faster and not care. <laughs> and I can sand it and make it beautiful. And this is where it was really curvy, so we're probably gonna need a lot in there. Yeah, it's starting to set up. It really is fast. So we'll just mix up more and finish filling in. We discovered that this plastic little spatula that we used when um, doing the epoxy countertops works really good for smoothing out that Bondo. So we just went around the bed and filled in any other large imperfections. Once the Bondo was dry, which only takes about 15 minutes, we're just going to use 80 grit sandpaper to take that down. And then we're going to use 220 sandpaper on the wood putty sections or the wood filler sections. Then we just went around the entire bed, sanding down all of those spots that we filled in. Here's a look at the footboard after that first coat. It worked pretty good. I just need to do a second coat now and level out some of these spots but now you can see it's a nice squared off edge this area right here was by far the most bowed or I keep saying bowed but it was just ground down and very rustic so I'm just gonna do my second coat I just wanted to point out how good the Bondo worked on the bottom of this footboard. It really straightened things up and you can see just how wonky it was. One more look at the before. Can you guys even believe this is the same piece of furniture? We are finally finished with this build. You guys, thanks so much for sticking around. I know this was a longer video. Hope you enjoyed this process. We are going to do the faux wood painting technique on it in part two, so be sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next episode. The reason we're painting it instead of stain is because we had to bring in another piece of wood with the side rails and the caps, so we weren't sure that they would stain the same color. We wanted to paint it to get a unified look, and we're going to use a cool new technique that is going to give us the look of rifted oak. So stay tuned, this is gonna be awesome. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. And together we'll bring our homes to the sunny side of the street.